Okay. See, another important uh, question, like the difference between view and the materialized view. Okay. See, view is a virtual table. We we'll call it as a view is a virtual table because view will maintain the logical copy of the data. Logical copy of the data. Okay. So it created by the table. Okay. Logical copy of the table created by the select query. See what are the view you are creating, like simply this view. So what are the query you are creating using the select query? This query can be stored as a as a query as an expression okay you are not storing any data in case if you create a material view so material view is also same like as a view materialized view as also same like as a view but simply there is some other difference here create a materialized view create materialized view MV. So to understand our uh, work, so I'm mentioning like simply MV underscore Shanti. The material view got created. Okay. See, have you you created the normal view? The view is as I'm saying like it's a virtual table. Virtual table in the sense it does not occupy any data. It does not occupy any data that we can call it. So see, it looks like as a table for you, but it won't take any space on the disk. What are the database objects is taking the disk space. It is allocating any disk space for that particular object that all objects will be stored in the user underscores segments. User underscore segments. The name can be the segment can be created with the table name or view name anything any anything like what the database object you created based on that it get segment underscore name equals to vw underscore sum see it is not the actual table right so that's the reason you are not seeing this as a database object okay see you created the normal table tt underscore emp See that you are able to see in this user underscore segment because table is a physical table. Table is a database object. It contains physical. Okay. See, you may see like well you can able to touch and you can able to uh, take the water and drink, right? But in the mirrors, you can you can able to see the mirrors, but you cannot able to touch that. If you are going to nearby that mirrors, that will be uh, disappear that will be disappear, right? See the same way, if it the view is a virtual table, so while you are trying to touch this component in the segment, see, you are not at all seeing any entry for this because the view does not occupying any space on the disk, okay? See, now you can see this, all the things for the materialized view as well, simply, okay? Materialized, you created this materialized view, and you can see about this materialized view simply okay mv and mv underscore sample is my thing and pull the data see 0 0.32 seconds it took in this to fetch same the results it is taking 0 0.24 in the view okay so now if you run this again the first time it will take some extra time because it need to do some parsing activity see whatever the inside the query what query you written by you okay the query inside the, whatever the query you run the very recently right the query need to be validated by the oracle parsing engine parsing engine the parsing engine will look the values the table name provided in the from class is present in your database object or not have you provided the semicolon or not see it check the syntactical checks it perform the syntactical checks that we can call it as a that we can call it as a passing. See, if you provided like wrong name in this, now it giving the error. The passing got failed. The passing got failed. Invalid number. Sorry, not this. The table or view does not exist. Right. See now, if you run the same statement, 
if you run the same statement so it it will take less time see because the parsing is already happened now see 0 0.07 seconds it took because the first time when when you are running at the query first time it takes some parsing activity extra time it takes some extra time for that particular parsing activity if you are running the same query repeatedly so it generates for every query execution it generates some hash value hash value see select star from mv underscore champ it generates some one two three four five as a hash key if you are running the same query again and again the hash key value won't be changed see table uh, data retrieval process will be if you are running in the user one if you are running in the user two every place will be same select star from table select star from table that's fixed right the same see the passing activity you are able to save from the second time onwards okay that's the reason you are getting like a 0 0.06 seconds now in the materialized view you are able to get the data 0 0.06 try to run with the normal view see 0 0.023 seconds see 0 0.06 0 0.23 see almost 18 uh, uh, or 17 milliseconds got taking extra time right because view won't store any data view does not have any storage device view always depend on the view is always depending on the page table see if you come to this storage in views the resulting tuple of the query expression is not getting storing on the disk okay see the query ex expression is not getting sort uh, sorry storing on the disk it's wrong actually see in in views result okay results of the query is not getting stored whereas in the material layer view both query expression and resulting tuple of the query get stored on the disk right you are seeing some difference see we can validate the storage is checking or not we can see in this simply go to the material layer view and see that if any object is taking space in the database that all the components will see in the user underscore segments see now you are seeing the entry for this see you created the material layer view but it is treating asset segment type as a table because whatever the expression you written as a select query the expression results need to be stored need to be stored as an object so for that reason if you want to store any data we need the table you don't have any other database object to store the data if you are storing as a data in the database okay that way you call it as a table so for that reason it is creating automatically two components one will create the view see select star from user underscore objects objects where object underscore name equals to such this value mv underscore sample so you are seeing two entries because one is the materialized view one is the table because it automatically creating some storage device as a table this is one the difference okay see normal view and material view differences see here see view is a virtual table and you are uh, storing the select query but not but the result is not stored anywhere in the disk and every time you need to fire the query when we need data so always we get updated our latest information from the original tables while running off the view every time you will get the updated information for the views but whereas in the normal uh, sorry whereas in the material view it it won't update every time so the data need to be update 
based on your requirement. So if you put like a create materialized view, view name, you write, you written here, right? So this will uh, create the material view as a on demand base, on demand base. See on demand base in the sense, whenever it required to refresh the data from the base tables. By using this, we can uh, refresh the data on demand in the sense, whenever it required for us, we'll refresh. If you have a on commit, on commit. So whenever you are doing the commit on the base tables, if you are doing data changes or insertion or updation, anything, if you use the commit, it automatically get reflected in the material view as well. So it is taking some time to get the data here. That is the another difference. See, you are always get the latest information, not in the materialized view. Okay. See, and another thing, see query expression as mentioned above, in case of view, the query expression is stored on your disk, not its results. So query expression get ex executed every time when the query user try to fetch the data. So it's from it so that user will get the latest or updated values every time. See, if the base table having any changes, those changes will reflect immediately in the normal use. Because you are fetching always on the base tables. See, whereas in this, while on the other hand, this materialized views, the results of the query is get stored on disk. And hence, uh, the query expression did not uh, executed every time. When user try to face the data so that user will not get the latest and updated value because you are fetching the data from your disk space, not with the table disk space. OK, see if the base table is having any changes, those changes will take time to get affected. You need to use refresh mechanisms. You need to use refresh mechanisms and cost. View does not have any storage cost because you are not storing any data okay, associated with it. So they also does not have any updated cost associated with it. See, there is no, you are not at all running any query on the view. I mean, DMLs, DDLs, you are not doing anything. So because whatever the cost is occupying to do the DMLs on the table level, that is the cost only I am taking. OK. Whereas in this, in the materialized view, does have storage cost associated with it. See, because you are making some storage, special storage device for the select query results. So, so it's so always have an updated cost with, with it. See, if you use like uh, on commit or on demand, so while retrieving of the, while refreshing of the material views, it will take some cost or memory. Okay, that is another difference. Uses, uses. See, when we'll go with views, when we'll go with material views. So where you are pulling the data, very frequently go with material issues where you are pulling the data infrequently infrequently in such case you will go with the views see views are generally used when data is to be accessed infrequently infrequent very rarely if you are calling the data we are using the data we'll go with the views and Data in the table get updated on a frequent basis. So you are you are frequently calling the data. You are frequently using the data, but you are always looking the updated information. In such place, you need to go with normal views only. Infrequent is one option where you are always expecting from the system updated information for every statement execution. In that case, also you need to go with the Views. See, in others, uh, like in the middle life use, uh, use when the data is accessed by frequently. Because, see, it always, you no need to go with the, uh, always from the base tables to face the 
large amount of data for every time. If there is no data change from now to the next day or kind. OK, see until then you can go with that. Materialized speed. OK. If it is continuously updating the data that also need to be uh, gated in the material view in this, I mean, in the result in the sense, better you can go with the views. OK, see. And uh, index. See on views, we cannot able to create any indexes. We cannot able to create any. Indexes. OK, in view in M views, we can able to create indexes. See, we have MV underscore sample. We can create the index in top of this. Create index IND one two three. So the name I'm providing some uh, defines on. So what it is employee ID. Now you created the index because you created the table on table you can able to create index. Now I'm trying to create with the. So VW underscore sample is my database object. And I'm trying to create an index on view. See, it is giving the error. A view is not appropriate here. To create index, this is not like a, a correct place. Okay. This is not correct place here. Okay. This is one thing. And another thing, you can able to perform the DMLs actually, right? Now I'm trying to delete the data or performing insert into v underscore sample i'm trying to perform some dml operations or we can delete that data simply delete from vw underscore sample See, integrity constraint violated because it is allowing to delete the data. It is allowing to delete the data in the normal view. See, it is giving like a, uh, it is not giving the error. Uh, you cannot able to delete here something like. See, you are able to delete. It is giving like a chain records font. So while deleting of the primary key values, while killing to the parents, if the parent having the child, the child will come and uh, uh, support the parents. That is what happening here. Child record form, right? Now you can go and do with the metal views. We'll get the error. See, data manipulation operation operation not legal on this view. But it so this is another difference. You cannot able to perform the DMS. Okay. See, this is about the little views. And uh, what are the refresh mechanisms we have in the middle views? So you are saying like uh, you refresh the data whenever it required for it, right? So we have the ways like uh, refresh mechanisms using complete refresh. The complete refresh you know the complete refresh option will use if the base table having like a thousands of data or lakhs of data if you are doing only simple you know, five records or two records updation data updation or insertion so if you are doing the data changes of four percent or five percent or one percent also in such case i don't want to take the risk so what are the updated or incremental information need to be updated I can go with simply um, fast refresh option. I don't want to take the risk. I need to update back everything from the data again. OK, that we can.
Okay, see, here we are seeing like a refresh mechanism if the materialized view or base table having any changes. If it is a one record, one percent of data, full percent of the data, hundred percent of the data. I don't want to take the risk. I need to refresh entire data from the base tables back. In such case, I can go with the complete refresh option. So if you have any data changes, or full data change, or half data change, or zero percent of data change, or one percent of data change, I need to update that particular updated information in my materialized view. I can go with the fast refresh option. Fast refresh option. OK, this is one mechanism. And we have on demand. I said like a, we have two ways while creating of the materialized views on demand on commit. These two fast refresh and the complete refresh will work on the on commit. But whereas in the uh, on demand, so you need to use a manual refresh for this on demand whenever it, it required the data updated data for you you can refresh on that particular time okay so use the dbms underscore mview package for this dbms underscore mview package and the material is view name go to this use execute dbms underscore mview is the inbuilt package provided by the varaki this is the package and this is the procedure name and you need to use the materialized view name in the single quotations. You need to refresh the data like this. I will get the updated information from the base tables. By using this, this is about the all the, about the views and materialized views differences. OK, and we'll see. We'll see difference between difference between like DDL and DML. It's not like very important. It's important. OK, difference between DDL and DML commands. See, to define the database objects, we'll use the DDL commands. The define in the sense, creating the tables, dropping the tables, altering the table. OK, DML. So to manipulate the database objects, like a tables. We'll use, we'll use this DML commands. Inserting the data, updating or deleting such kind of things, we'll use the DML. See, DDL operations are, we are saying like auto committed commands. See, so you are building the house or, uh, by staying on that your place and you are constructing the house. So you no need to say like, this is my house, this is my house. OK, it's already known thing. This DDL is uh, mine. This object is mine. OK, so where you are trying to give the tenant, the tenant need to be committed by. If you accept the tenant, then only he can able to stay in the house. Right, see the meaning here. What are the DDL commands you are using? Create, alter, drop, these are all things, right? Auto committed commands. Okay, so DML commands are non auto committed commands. You need to use always commit or rollback option to get permanent changes for that. This is one thing. And another important, this is also, this is important one we can say. See, difference between delete, truncate, and drop. So most of the places you may see difference between delete and truncate. So I'm adding like a drop as well here. Drop as well here. Simply, simply delete is a DML command. Truncate and the drop are the both are the DDL commands. So meaning delete have the option to cancel the transaction. So if you are inserting or updating, right? So you can able to use the rollback option because it's a non auto committed commands. Manually, you need to use the commit in this case. You can able to use instead of commit, you can able to use rollback as well. There is an option to roll back the data. But in truncate, you don't have any option to roll back the data. 
okay and drop so drop is used to see delete will delete the data the table structure will be same truncate will delete the data table structure will be same and drop is also delete the data along with table structure along with the table structure if you drop the table the whole data get be so we'll see some example for this we created like tt underscore emp table right tt underscore emp right so now you use delete from emp okay now i use this I roll back it actually. Let's see. I'm using the delete and get and as well as the now I'm trying to delete the data. 109 records got deleted. Select stuff from TT underscore ALP. See, no data is present in this. You can able to use the rollback option to cancel this particular operation because it's a non auto committed command. Okay, now I'm trying to use prop table, table name in this case. Because if I truncate the data, I don't have option. If I truncate the data, I don't have any option to roll back. OK, now I'm using like drop table table name. My table got dropped. So select the data from this. CT underscore EMP. See, it is showing like a table or view does not exist. Table or view does not exist. OK, so now I drop this my table, my data. See, my database object has been dropped. See, if you collapse your house, so whatever the inside members we have, the members also get like collapsed. Right, the data also, also get be loose. You lose the data and you lose the table also. You, you have the option to flash back. Flashback table table name tt underscore emp to before drop. See a flashback succeed. You have the option to flashback the table. See, but but whereas in this case. Whereas in the truncate table option, I truncated the data. See, truncate table. And I'm trying to use the rollback. Okay, I'm trying to select the data first. Select star from TT underscore EMP. There is no data. You deleted the data, the table structure is persisting. Table structure is persist. Same. Okay. Now trying to use the rollback. Rollback completed, but you don't have option to get back the data. Okay. See in this case, delete. We have the option to roll back the data one once after deleting the data in the truncate. You don't have option to roll back. Whereas in the drop, the table structure will be dropped and along with data. There is an option to flash back the data in the table, delete, drop. Right? This is one thing. And you can able to use the, if you have thousands of data, you can able to delete, 
few of the records in the delete command because you can able to use where class in the delete command. You can able to delete department ID equals to something like you can put like anything. Okay, so there is an option for that as well for you. Okay, now I'm trying to make some insertion back like this thing later. Okay, so I'm not able to delete the data. So now I'm, because I, I need to reinsert the data back. See so where you can able to use department number equals to 10. So you can able to delete the data from employee table. Okay, so you can able to delete the data. Using where class, you can able to delete part of the table data from the using where class. But whereas in this truncate, you can able to delete whole table data. In the drop, you are able to delete whole table data along with structure. Okay, couples, another difference. And you can see other difference. Performance is slow because delete statement will delete the data row by row deletion. Okay, so truncate will delete the data at the table level. So it perform like high performance. It give best best performance. In the drop, you cannot see any performance improvement or decreasion. So I delete the table structure along with data. So however, is faster only. Okay, and delete is non auto committed command. Truncate is auto committed. Drop is also auto committed command. So if you are delete the data using delete command. You won't, it won't release the space. It mark it as a watermark space. See, if you are staying in some PC, okay, the PC owner have the uh, in mind like this is where the room one is having ABC member, room two is having XYZ person. Okay, see, out of the six people, like someone is vacated in that PC. Okay, see, who is working under that uh, him? like in the PC. So if someone is came to join in the PC, uh, array go and uh, uh, join the new member in the X seat who is vacated in the earlier. See, the name is marking as a, this bed is belonging to X person. If you are vacating the whole of PC, you don't have option to set like I say, this is, this uh, bed is belonging to X person, this bed is belonging to Y person. There is no watermark memory. It call as a watermark memory. Okay. The mark will be cleaned when someone is occupied in that space. Okay. So it has been replaced with X with uh, some P, Q, or any, any person. Okay. That's we can call it as a watermark space. The deleted of records can set it as a watermark records, watermark space. It won't release the space, occupied space, water the space, it's occupied, right? That space won't be, give it back to the system. The space can be reutilized when the new person came to join in the piece. That is one thing. And uh, if you delete the data using truncate command, it release the whole space. If you are evacuating the whole PC in the sense, everybody we can, I mean the space all, so what are the occupied space having in the PC? That space has been uh, reallocated back to the system. Okay, so in this case also the same, drop also will release the space. It go and sit into the recycle bin. If you pulse the recycle bin, the space also get released. Okay. See, structure will be remaining the same in this case. Here also structure will be same. Structure will lose. Structure and data will loss. This is another important thing. Okay. So now we're done with almost uh, everything in this uh, SQL. 
Okay, so now we'll see another important like uh, difference between how to generate generate a negative negative sequence numbers using sequence sequence how to generate negative sequence numbers using the sequence usually the sequence will generate the positive numbers usually will generate the uh, sequence numbers like sim how to create the sequence create simply you will go with the sequence sequence s1 create sequence s1 if you create this if you create this Now I'm creating like a S23 is my sequence name, and I'm creating S24 is my sequence. Okay, see, I'm creating the two. Uh, if you want to drop, we'll use drop sequence sequence name, right? Here also, I'm dropping this. Sequence. See, you have some parameters here. Here we have some parameters. You need to be aware of this. See, sequence start with start with hundred. If you mention, see, select S twenty three dot next value. From doing. See now you created the sequence and you initiated the sequence. Now you can able to you activated the sequence. You can say like a, you initiated or you can activated the sequence using sequence name dot next one. Okay, and now I am trying to call the same sequence from twenty four. See, instead of uh, initiating this, I'm using like a curveball. So curveball will help. Curveball will help uh, to give the latest, latest sequence. What the what the sequence you generated very recently? That number you can get using curveball. See, you created the sequence. You haven't activated that sequence. Then you are trying to see what the recent uh, number has generated the, using that sequence. Okay, see, is not a defined in this session. Sequence S24 is not a defined in this session. See, the cause is this. The solution for this select sequence, uh, sorry, next valve from this particular sequence before selecting the karma. It is giving the error for you. Before using this curval function, pseudo column is the pseudo column. If you are using this curval, before using this curval, try to use next val is the function for that next val. Okay. Now you can see in this case, see in this case, you won't get any trouble because you already initiated this sequence. 101. One zero one. If you run n number of times, I will give the same results. And if you run this, it is incrementing the one by one values, right? So now I'm dropping this sequence and I'm mentioning like a increment by two. Increment by two. Now if you see. 100 is my current sequence. Now I'm calling like a curve. It is showing this. See, increment by two from one sequence to another sequence. How many values I need to keep or how many values I need to add for the current sequence? 1, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. See, it is increasing one by one value, right? Now, the same way, 
you can able to generate the negative sequence numbers as well. See, start with, mention the start with keyword as a bigger number, as a bigger number. And U is like minus two, increment by minus two. Okay, now I'm dropping this and I'm recreating the sequence. To start with, uh, we cannot move down the maximum value. Okay, so simply I'm mentioning like a hundred. All right, it's been there. Okay, maximum value. Maximum value ten thousand. Start with a uh, hundred. Yeah. So now I'm in the current sequence is 100. Sorry, I haven't initiated the sequence, right? I need to initiate first. Now I'm in 100. Now I'm calling like one more time. It is giving 98, 96, 94. See, it is generating the negative numbers. If you mention like minus one, it generate. Hundred, ninety nine, ninety eight. Right? So, this is one thing. How to generate? See, how to. This is one important thing. We have another important. See, this is a sequence. It will help us to generate the negative numbers. Okay? So use some bigger number as a start with option and use increment by as a negative number. This will give the. Okay. How to generate alternative numbers? How to generate alternative numbers for this? One, three, five, eight, seven like this. So simple. So simple using. See, start with you can start with uh, one. Okay, and increment by two. See, simple. Create this and call the sequence. It start with one. It give three, five, seven. If you want to start the even number, if you want to generate the even numbers, use increment by. So start with two and increment by two. Now see two, four, six, eight. Add it right. So, if you want to do like this, how to generate uh, even numbers, how to generate all numbers, how to generate even numbers using sequence, using sequence, even or odd. You see, even or odd, use this sequence. Okay, so this is one thing. And another thing, but we have other things. How to display even records from the table? How to display even or old records from the table? Display only. Even records from the table. To retrieve the data from the tables. Okay, so we'll use simply select star from EMP. Okay, now we have this employee table and I'm trying to retrieve the data. Okay. See this having like 7369 is the first record and 7499, 7566 is the even records, alternative records. I want to display alternative records. Okay, now I'm trying to use EMP dot star. Okay, so now if you want to know, 
So you first you need to know the mod function advantage mod. Mod function will help you to divide the numbers. And what is the remainder value if you are divide? So you are divisioning with the two numbers. So what the remainder you will get that you will get using this mod function. Four comma two. From Delhi. See, you are getting zero. So now I'm mentioning 41. We'll get one. See, you are dividing with uh, 41 with two. We'll get the remainder is one. Either one or zero. We will get only two things. One or zero. Right? See, if we use the row I row number, row number in this case. Row number is giving like a serial number for every record. That is the in which position or which line it is that is giving like a one, two, three, four, like this. Right? Now, if I use like a five comma two, we are getting one. Right? See so the same if I use the function way that mod of a row number comma two equals to one. See, you won't uh, get any data actually because row num equals to one, it works. See, if you retrieve the data from the table, select start from EMP where row num equals to one, it works. If you mention like row num equals to 10, you won't get any data. Right? See, in this case, you cannot able to retrieve other than the first record. Other than the first record, you cannot able to retrieve. 1, comma 2, if you provide, right? 1, comma 2, if you provide, it gives the result as a 1. Okay? See, in this case, to get like a clear output, so you cannot able to use this as a row num in the where class. Row num in the where class. Because row num equal to one other than this, you cannot able to do any. You cannot able to retrieve the data using equal operator. Okay. See, now I'm making as a derived column of this row num. I'm deriving some extra column in this. I'm passing this as a inline view. See. Now, I make one query here with uh, some extra column like RN, RSNO, serial number, or row number, row num. Row num is my column. Right? See, you cannot able to use row num as a row num as alias name here. It gives the error for you, definitely. Okay, that's the reason I change some. Like, Column. Okay. Now I'm making as a inline view of this query. I'm making as a inline view as this query. Okay. Now I'm performing this operation now. Where mod of Now I'm doing the same thing with the derived column. See, see now, now this is your actual column of the table. See what are the query you mentioned here? This acting like as a table name for this query. See instead of from class in the from class instead of table name, you pass one query. It acting like as a table. Okay, this we can call it as a inline view. Okay, now. If this is I'm like I'm treating like I said this is my actual column of the table. So now I am trying to do the mod mod operation on this row num. Now we will get this everything. See 7369 is my first record and 747521 is my third record. You can verify it. 7369 is first record and 7521 is third record. And seven six five four is the 
fifth regard. See, you can see the, the rem, uh, what are the expected records you are getting on 7654, 7521, 7356. See, the row number also you are seeing the values here, 13579 like this. Okay, the mod function will help us to get the alternative records from the table. So you need to make it as a derived column of this row number and you need to use this derived column in the mod function. You cannot able to use row num in the directly in the where class by using mod function and inline view we can able to in view we can able to get the required results. Okay, and another uh, things. Difference between NVL function, NVL to coil-C function, we already done with that. Okay, and uh, see how to display last 10 rows from the table, how to display and goes from the thing. so i don't know like what is the volume of uh, my table but i need last 10 rows so I, if you want to retrieve the first 10 rows it's a simple how to display first and last 10 rows from the table Okay, see for first answer for this first ten rows, first ten rows simply. So select start from table name where row num less than or equals to death. It gives the first ten rows. But you cannot able to know like what is the last 10 rows. Right? In this case, you need to use the second one. Second. Last. And rows. So for this, you need to use some analytical function here. You need to use some analytical function. See, treat like I say EMP table. Okay, see how many records I have. Totally, I have 107 records in my table. If I go to the last 10 rows, so I need to get like a, maybe. 97 101 this record 7 double zero 7 9 zero 4 this last two records you need to get i'm pinning this and you can able to see the results as well okay so if you want to know this first you need to know see first 10 records you can able to use like select star from emp where row num less than or equals to 10 you will get the same results here this is 7369 the same you already observed is seven ten records you got if you want to know the last ten records first you need to know the depth of this uh, table for that you need to use emp dot star and use some function like a row number is the analytical function not the row num row underscore number is the analytical function row underscore number okay so over order by row id descending see what is the latest record what is the least record you can able to identify with row id so whatever the record you insert at the first it give like a least row id what is your the recent uh, record we have it give the latest id or maximum row id 
that is the highest row id okay so you can use like order by row id descending so you are now you are looking the values from last row id to the first row id so now you've got like a la that all the records got a chain from highest record to the last record highest record to the first record now see you can verify the data here simply see 7904 is our last record it came to the first 700 is a second record it came to the second part now you can able to get simply row num less than or equal should it? so i mentioned like a rn is alias name for this i can use this as a selection of from i'm making as a inline view of this query and i'm filtering simply where rn less than or equals to so till 102 we set right this is this is the place you will get the 10 records you got this 10 okay this is the way you can get the data you need to first you need to provide some sequential number for that particular table and you can this one, this is the second step. Okay, first you need to derive this, make the row ID from highest row ID to the least row ID, provide the rank for that, and filter the. I can pass this uh, query as a inline view, and you can filter the data using where row number less than or equal to 10. Okay, this is about this. And uh, another thing how to display the off record from the table off of the record if we have 107 i don't know like uh, what is the volume of data on my table but i need uh, display like first off record from this table. see how can i display the off record from this table simply take the count of this select count star from emp it have like a 107 right now i need like a off of the records right so divide it by two i will get like a off of the records like 53.5 see you need to adjust with the one record from first part or one record from the last part okay so try to round it like this round round off count star divided by 254 see you can pass this as a value of this column see row number less than or equals to okay equals to you can pass this query as a value this query will give um Passing as a sub query. See, this query will give 54. It displaying the off is off. What is the count of the table of first half records? A second half or first half or second half. So you are looking for the what is the off record value? I need to display first half the records. Allah. So in this case, simply you can pass it as a Then count it, you will get like 54. So, how to see so how to display of records from the table. First, you can take the round count, uh, count star divided by two, total records divided by the two, and round it up that, and you can pass this query in this where class. 
as a subquery, then you will get the row number is than or equal to this quant. You will get the half of the required comments. So this is about the whole SQL. So we have 15 uh, totally. We have the 15 uh, questions. So whole SQL is having only 15 interview questions. So maybe you may see some other important thing like uh, synonyms. What is synonym? What is the advantage of the synonym? So synonym. Synonym. Simply synonym is an alternative name for any database object. Synonym is an alternative name for any database object. So which is used to like uh, provide the security to the database object to hide the original objects. We'll make some uh, binomies. OK, and uh, you may see the public synonym. We have two types of synonyms, public synonym and private synonym. The public synonyms can access by any any user. Any user, but private synonyms can be accessible within the data within the particular user itself. See so user underscore tables, user underscore views, user underscore indexes. These are all the public synonyms provided by the Oracle user. See synonyms. In Oracle. Synonyms in Oracle. See, synonym is an alternative name for that any database objects. And uh, we have two types of synonyms private, public. See, any database object you can able to create the private synonyms anywhere. Scheme. Say pub. any like any database objects you can create on top of any database objects you can create a synonym. Okay, so whereas if you create the private, private, it is it is accessible within the User itself within the user itself. It can be accessible within the user itself. Okay. So whereas if you create this as a public synonym, you can able to access this entire database. It can access. It can accessible within the user itself. It can be accessible. Entire database. Entire data. Yes. See, usually we'll use like user underscore tables, user underscore views. You already know. You are accessing a lot of public synonyms on the daily basis. So you are using like most of the times dual table is the table like dual table. This is not the table. This is a public synonym created by the Oracle. You can check in user underscore all underscore objects. Select star from all underscore objects. Where object underscore name equals to dual. See, owner is the sys dual. This object type is a table. Here, one one other thing you are saying that owner is a public dual object name is a dual, but object type is a synonym here. You see, public synonym. You see, like user underscore objects. See, user underscore objects is also public synonym. User underscore. Object is also public synonym. Okay. So this is about like SQL interview questions. We have only 15, 17 interview questions, mm -hmm. not more than that. But if you learn this, definitely you can crack the interviews. Okay. I'm going to stop here.